born with a sinful nature. Jesus was perfect. The Bible says he never sinned. Read Hebrews chapter 4, I believe it is, where it talks about we have a, a great high priest who cares about us. We can come boldly to the throne of grace in time of need. But in that passage of Scripture there, it says, who was without sin. When it's describing Jesus, it says, who was without sin. He was the sinless Son of God because he was not born of a natural kind of a birth. He was born supernaturally. And of course, Jesus existed before he was born and became a baby there in Bethlehem's manger. He existed from all time. He was there at creation. John chapter 1 says that he was. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were created by him, and nothing was made without him. So he was right there. Have you ever noticed in Genesis, there at the beginning of the book of Genesis, it says, let us make man in our image. I think that is a, a foreshadowing of to help us to begin to understand that God is three persons in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. So we fathers want to give their, their children the best gifts. That's what's, what is said here at the beginning of this passage of Scripture. But we have a sinful nature, and we don't always do the right thing, but we want to do what's best. What would you like to give your children, fathers? And even grandfathers, because grandfathers have an impact on their children too. And great-grandfathers. We only have one child. But it doesn't take long. You know, when they're growing up, you think, well, one of these days they're going to be grown up and they're going to be gone away from home and they're, they're going to be on their own. But really, they're never totally on their own. <laughs> You, you always feel somewhat responsible for them, and they always feel like, well, that's mom and dad. We can go to them and ask for things whenever we need something, and that's just the way it is. And some children become more independent than others, and they ought to. It's good for them to become independent, because one of these days, mom and dad are not going to be around. So they have to learn how to become independent. But fathers, parents want to give their children the best things, don't they? We, we want to give our children good things, material things. We want them to be able to dress nicely. But you know, sometimes we give them too much. Don't you think we do? The children don't think that. I never thought I got too much when I was growing up. But then I didn't get very much. I started buying my own clothes when I was in junior high. My dad had such a big family that, uh, and he didn't make very much money, that if I wanted to wear some nice clothes, I started working and getting jobs and washing cars when I was just a kid, washed cars for a used car dealer there, and made a little bit of money every week. And and I opened a, a, a charge account, believe it or not, way back then. I'm talking about 50 years ago. 50 years ago, I opened a charge account at a local men's clothing store. And Mr. Coons, it was called Coons Clothing Store, and Mr. Coons would let me charge a shirt or a tie or a pair of slacks or even a suit and pay him a couple of dollars every week until it was paid for. And one day after I had, had uh, grown up and got, I don't know if I was out of high school, and maybe into college, one day I went into a store and Mr. Coons, he was so proud of me, he, went, he took out this, this thing he had in his files and he said, he said, I want to show you what you have done. He, he pulled this thing out and he said, look at all the things you have bought and paid for across the years. It made me feel good because I had paid, paid for a lot of things across the years. My father wasn't able to provide everything for me. And I'm glad that I didn't have everything because I had things to look forward to and I learned how to become responsible myself. If I wanted to have certain things, I was going to have to get out and work for it. I bought my own first car. My dad didn't buy me a car. I only paid $100 for it. Boy, I wish I had it now. It was a 1955 Chevrolet, two-door post. Had a six-cylinder engine. It'd be worth more than $100, even in the condition it was in back then. It was kind of rusty, and I didn't have it very long. I was a little rough on it. But I uh, bought that car, and I bought my next car, and I, I bought my own things. My parents weren't able to provide everything for me. And I'm glad that I had to become responsible. And so we can give our children too much of material things. 
so that they don't learn how to take responsibility and they just kind of depend on us. But we want to give them material things. We want them to have a good education, don't we? And that's a, a very important thing. And we want for them a loving and caring home environment, don't we? That's even more important than this, than these material things and, and the other things. Now that I'm grown up a little bit, <laughs> Well, 63 years old, you know, it's grown up a little bit. Now that I look back on it, now that I can see what really is valuable, it didn't, doesn't matter to me at all that my dad couldn't buy me my first car or that he couldn't buy my clothes for me. He did some, but I, if I wanted more, I had to go out and earn, earn some money and, and buy things for myself. But you know what matters most to me now? I look back and I remember the times when my dad opened his big family Bible and gathered us all around in the evening and read the Bible to us and we all prayed. That's how I learned how to pray in the, at the family altar. We all prayed from the youngest to the oldest. Every one of us prayed at the family altar. We might have all said the same thing. My dad would pray last. We would pray and pray around. But each child would pray. Every one of us. That's how we learn how to pray. But that's what I uh, cherish the most from growing up. And I'll tell you, fathers, grandfathers, all of us who have responsibility for children, that they, when they get older, the things they're going to cherish the most are going to be different than, than what they think is really important now. So don't forget about the things that really matter with your children. Spiritual things real love and concern and, and tenderness and compassion that you can show that will mean something when material things, when they're, you know, everything I had when I was growing up, I, I didn't keep much of anything. I broke everything I got. My bicycles, I wore them out fast. I don't know how my wife kept things. She still has a, she still has some things made out of paper that she had when she was growing up. She must have been an unusual child. She has a dollhouse and she has little things that I would, have, I would have just destroyed all those kinds of things before I got old enough to, to realize there was any value in them. But she still has things like that. But the thing is, the things we cherish the most, both of us now, are the heritage that we have. Christian parents and their love and their care for us and their sacrifices for us. I don't have my watch this morning, so I don't know what time it is. It could be 2 o'clock for all I know. Anybody know what time it is? 12.15. 12.15. Come on. Is it, is it actually 12 o'clock yet? It is? Wow. You know something? I would say that this, I finished this sermon this evening, except we're not coming back this evening. So I'm not going to finish tonight, but I'm going to kind of kind of close things up here. But I would like to to go to the to the last point. I've only got two points, so you should be thankful for that. I usually have more. I've only got one more point that I'd like to make this morning. And I've made the point that earthly fathers want what's best for their children. But the second thing in this passage is that we learn that God will give us good gifts. Our Heavenly Father wants what's best for us too. Now just as sometimes when we're real young, when our parents tell us something's good for us, we don't really believe them, do we? Did you ever believe your your mom or your dad when they were giving you a spanking and they said, this hurts me more than it hurts you? I don't think most children believe that. That wasn't true. But I think sometimes that's true. And, you know, we when, we have, when, we're, when we're young, we don't realize the value of things. Sometimes our parents say no. And they ought to say no to some of the things we want. But our Heavenly Father is the same way. It doesn't mean that they don't love us because they say, no, you can't have this or wait. And when God doesn't give us what we want right away, it doesn't mean He doesn't love us. And this scripture goes on to say that God wants what is best for us. He gave us the most important thing of all. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The most important thing God did for us was he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. But he gives us so much more, doesn't he? 
He blesses us in so many ways. And then it ends by, he says, then if you 